Beelink accidentally publishes private keys, how to anonymize your anonymous surveys, a million dollar bug bounty, and radio hacks on a balloon, what could go wrong? All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for September 23rd, 2015, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. There has been a lot of news this week, so let's get right into it. So first off, whenever you install a program, it's usually going to ask you if you want to allow that program to make changes to your computer. You'll get a verified publisher and the program name and a fancy little pop-up, and that verified publisher has to sign a cryptographically secured key that proves that they are who they say they are. It's not so secure if you accidentally share that private crypto key, so yeah. D-Link, the company who provides networking equipment, did just that. Huh. Whoops! <laughs> this happened back in February on D-Link's GPL source code sharing website, where they posted four signed private keys, one of which was still valid when found up until September 3rd, so just a few weeks ago. So since then, it has been updated, but if the key was used to sign any programs as valid before that expiration date, then a computer would see it as legit. Even worse so, the key hasn't been revoked yet either. So this means that while a private, legitimate key is public, anyone who wants to make a key logger or a program with a Trojan installed could potentially use this key to make their software look like a legit, trustworthy D-Link program. And as of time of recording, Symantec has not revoked the key. Yikes. You've probably filled out a survey or two online, right? If not, they are abundant and many say that they are anonymous. A professor at Cornell Tech, Raphael Pass, started looking into this and found that identifying information exists when people take surveys and felt that these anonymous surveys are not actually anonymous. Pass, with the help of fellow researcher Shalot, built Anonize, a cryptographically anonymous survey site. Anonize, or maybe it's Anonize, is a mobile app that generates a locally stored secret key and a public key similar to PGP's usage. The app can sign the submitted answers with the secret and the public key combo. Each survey has its own public key, so the matchup is never duplicated. The only way someone would know your private key is by breaking into your device since it is stored locally. The app will be open sourced eventually to allow for auditing and research. Research. Apple has just released iOS 9, and with it came an announcement. An exploit vendor called Zerodium is hosting a month-long bug bounty hunt for the operating system. For anyone who creates and submits an exploit for iOS 9 to Zerodium exclusively, they'll pay out $1 million, 3 million max over the course of the month. So according to their statement, the missions must, quote, include a full chain of unknown, unpublished, and unreported vulnerabilities and exploits, and must lead to and allow a remote, privileged, and persistent installment of an arbitrary app, e.g. Cydia, or a fully updated iOS 9 on a fully updated iOS 9 device. They also say it has to work on all newer models of iPhones and iPads and source code must be included. So I say good luck to anyone trying to do this bug bounty. A group of technologists, aka technologists, called Critical Engineering have developed a device that they hope will be able to record radio frequency data of devices such as government drones, satellites, and high altitude planes. The device, and the project called Deep Sweep, is made out of an acrylic orb with a bunch of radio equipment inside, tied to a weather balloon, and filled with helium. The probe includes three software-defined radios, three antenna, a GoPro camera, a GPS module, temperature and pressure sensors, a SIM card, and a battery. And it works with an Arduino and some open source software. So once it flies into the air and hits around 17 to 18 miles high, the balloon bursts and a nylon parachute floats it back all the way to land, or water, depending on where it is. An SMS is sent to the group to signal its location, and the data is available for download and can be viewed on their site. The group hopes that they can pick up conversations between government agencies and drones and hopefully recognize the spy devices overhead when they are actually there. But the data that they carry is most likely encrypted, which might be an issue. 
So moving on, remember to share your thoughts on today's topics down in the comments. I am curious what you think of the deep sweep balloon probe for starters. Is this a good idea? Is it a bad one? And what about Zerodium? Kind of weird, huh? And before I go, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the show so far on Patreon. Hey, if you can share a, spew f uh, the spew, a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash threatwire. We may even feature your adorable fur babies like this adorable adorable dog who has the best chew toy ever, and that cat who just keeps on showing up. I think he's a spy in the next episode. <laughs> They're really cute. So keep the show indie, keep it ad free. It's because of you guys. We do plan to do the show three times a week as a milestone goal with rotation of Darren Kitchen, Patrick Norton, and myself. We are on our way there and we will be creating an RSS feed for Threatwire once we hit our next goal. So keep it coming. Find out all the things at threatwire.net. And with that, I am Shannon Morse and I will see you technologists on the internet. <laughs> Bye. Thank <laughs> you.